Hallöchen, everybody outside there. It's me again, Rafi. And I'm very happy to have my new best friend <laughs> again here around. <laughs> and you, you probably know him already. Hello, Joe. Hello. How are you? And I'm good, thank you. How are you? Uh, okay. At least okay, that's good. Yeah, okay is better than not okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We start today a kind of, let's say, new series because we had the idea to show the people a kind of behind the scene the magic you are doing there on your computer, on your side, on with your hands, with your brain, with your creativity. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, he will guide me through, let's say, how to develop a 3D model. Can we say it like this and bring it into yeah, the flight like simulator in theory? Yeah, I like the basics of, uh, of modeling, I guess. Just, uh, just a short intro. Course. Okay, okay. Yeah. So let's see. So, uh, and one question I have before we start: um, mm -hmm. in Paderborn, when we met, you made the 3D yeah. screen of my face, yeah? and we yes. need to make it now official because now I'm working at Airsoft. Will be there any chance that my face will be in any kind of your sceneries? Yeah. What do you want to be? Like a statue or like a? Yeah, uh, yeah. something <laughs> like if, if it's a driveway yeah. to the airport in Frankfurt, yeah, yeah. something, <laughs> and then an optional <laughs> Rafi statue or something like that. So yeah, yeah. Um, in, in gold or. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Of course. So yeah. um, let us maybe know in the comments uh, if you would like to have my my beautiful or not beautiful face in the scenery. There is already a 3D scan, so it's um, let's say possible. But yeah. before talking um, around the topic, let's start into the video. I would say. Yeah. Sure. So uh, let's just jump straight into the 3D software that I use. This is what I use. It's a uh, 3D Studio Max. I'm not sure if you're familiar with like the uh, different type of software that's available. I'm only Fusion 360 user, but I, it's for 3D printing. Um, so yeah. Ooh, cool. So step one, right? Get a reference, add it into the scene. So you have something to basically, you know, align whatever you're creating with just to get the shape mm -hmm. correctly. Uh, then Usually when you model, uh, we have something that's called standard primitives. And that's sure. just your regular box, cone, sphere, cylinder, and so on. So that's... Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So whenever you basically create an object, you want to think, okay, what is this thing? If you break it down to like the, the most basic shape. And you know, for this one, it's, it's a cylinder, right? It's a cylinder with some... Uh, uh, bevels and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. if I were to start to create this, you would drag like a cylinder into the scene. Mm -hmm. uh, like so. You would then start to align it with the, with the reference image. All right. First question here is then a perfect picture would be if the angle would be as well the yeah. same with the picture. Yeah, yeah. You see, okay. Yeah, as you, yeah. So you can see here, this one is actually not the best reference because it's yeah. a little bit at an angle, right? Yeah. So when I align it here, you see it doesn't match here. So All right. in that yeah. case, you want to make sure that you just, whenever I select this top part here and move it down, I align it again in the same location yeah, here yeah. as I did at the bottom, right? If I were to align it up over here, this part would be too uh, tall, basically, right? Yeah. So. Now, what you would do then is basically go into this and start to drag and adjust. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like so. Whoa, that's, that was fast. Huh? That was fast. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> so it's yeah, I mean, it's of course, yeah, it's a basic yeah. thing, yeah. But. And yeah, it's, it, well, it looks way more complicated than what it really is. Maybe it is a diffusion limitation or a limitation I have, but uh, <laughs> that was too fast for me. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, but it's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's it's uh, so, so I, it, like I think it's technically called polygonal modeling or something like that. It's it's just that you you select in this case I can select this edge here, mm -hmm. and when I hold Control Shift, I can drag it in whatever direction I need. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's 
Uh, yeah. ah, okay. So that's the, okay. that's the method that I'm most used to modeling with, but it's like there's a million different ways of doing this. Um, Do you have any kind of, let's say, professional background in, in terms of modeling or no, just uh, learning by no, doing? No, I was just a nerd when I was a kid. Uh, cool. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> nice. So, yeah. But uh, now let's say here, for example, like in this case, we you can see we have like a sharp edge. So one yeah. way of doing this would be that you could go in and add like a chamfer here. Yeah. That's just automatically going to, you know, get this this uh oops ah okay see yeah this more more you know uh curvature here along the edge yeah so, uh, yeah. so is is this point already yeah. at, at this stage is this anything you have already in mind in terms of performance later on or is it for the moment doesn't matter uh, anything you want to try and keep performance in mind from the beginning so like for okay. this it's now in msfs though it's we are able to what you do you basically have multiple lod's so level of details on the model so mm -hmm. this uh, the amount of basically faces on the cylinder here would only be what you see when you're uh, really up close to it now i do have like this model finished so we can take mm -hmm. a look at that later on and that's the basically the the um, highest detail version of it that's going to be mm -hmm. only visible when you're like really really up close to the model Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I but understand. Yeah. you do want to keep it in mind, right? Because everything is going to be loaded into memory. Now, uh, polygons, they, they don't take that much space in memory, but still, it's something you want to keep in mind. Uh, mm -hmm. That you, you, want to, you don't want to, like, there's no reason to do, like, a cylinder, uh, let's see, like this. And here is where you basically can up the... The sides, yeah. Uh sides here so if you do 64 here ah uh, okay yeah, then it's more uh, round let's, let's say yeah. yeah it's more rounded it looks wow it looks so much better right but let's say you do one with 18. do you really see a difference not really uh, i mean it depends if it's a small object not if it's let's say a tank for example yeah, yeah that's then yeah, you that's see it yep. yeah yeah uh -huh. yeah so you want to keep in mind how close the user is going to be to the object mm -hmm. and you also want to like you said if this is a fuel tank this would, wouldn't be enough right yeah because then when you get close to it you would see oh edges yeah right? well this one would be better uh in that yeah. respect right you wouldn't be able to see the you would need to get closer to it basically before you start seeing those jagged edges right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. usually like you you just break everything down into the basic shapes so you start by, in this case, I started with this, you know, the the section all the way up here. Yeah. I would probably do as one element. Then I would do the bolt here as another one. And like the, the base here as another one as well. So what we can do now is that we can actually look at the finished Whoa. object here. So if I then go Crazy. into the front. View wait here, a second, wait see, a second. Yeah. yeah. Wait, look the detail you did of the latch let's say yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's insane yeah but like this is like what we talked about this is only going to be useful when you're really close to it so this is like some of the first thing you would just delete on on the next level of detail right the the object that would be loaded when you get further away yeah yeah i understand yeah, yeah. yeah. but um yeah but it um, is still there I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's there. Yeah. I mean, I mean, nobody probably in the flight sim, let's say, Sibers community would care about uh, normally, yeah, about a ledge uh, at yeah. a runway or taxi edge light, right? Mm. But uh, you do it. Is there any kind of why you can explain? Well, it's fun. It's fun. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, All right. Detail, details are fun, right? Now, let's say this is. Let's say I'm happy with this one, right? So I have mm -hmm. uh, everything split into different segments here. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is is for later when we're going to do like the, something called texture baking. Mm -hmm. We want to have the different elements uh, for the baking, but we can, we can look into that a little bit more later on. Yeah. Now, for the texture, you create something called uh 
a, a UV map. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's going to look like something like this. Mm -hmm. And what that is, it's simply these various elements here mm -hmm. arranged onto like the the surface that we're going to that's going to be our texture, right? Yeah. Like so. Mm -hmm. And you would import this into Photoshop and then you would start, you know, painting uh, your texture onto this. Right? Right. And then use yeah. this as like your reference for for um, where the different colors or the different uh, yeah materials would be right on the texture sheets. Okay. Uh, so now uh, for for some objects like this, we we do this a little bit differently now. We use something called the uh, substance painter. I'm not sure if you've heard about it. No. What is this? No. So it's a little bit more. It's it's a more advanced Photoshop. Let's just call it call it like that. It's it's a, <laughs> it's a Photoshop made for for three D uh, three right. D texturing, right? So to do that properly, we need something called a high poly model. So the high poly is simply ah. a similar object, but it's been subdivided. So you have more of the, um, you can see here, you have like rounded corners. Yeah, yeah. more, more sides, uh, basically. Yeah, yeah. And basically, yeah. so while well, here, the low poly, you can see it, it's you're just sharp corners, right? Mm -hmm. While high poly is subdivided to get like a smoother, uh, smoother surface, right? So yeah. in, in, in Substance Painter, the idea is that we want to try and transfer these types of detail over to our low poly. Ah, okay. Yeah, because that way we can get a, an object that looks kind of similar to this one in in you know smoothness. All right. Uh, but on a mesh, that's much simpler. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I don't know. Do you have like any, any questions about the 3D? Uh, I, the... I have 1,545 yeah. million questions. Let's begin. Let's begin. But uh, I would say we make two parts at least out of it because yeah. I don't want to rush too much in it. So yeah. I would say uh, for the moment, uh, if you liked what you have seen so far, what we have done here, um, head back to our YouTube channel and come around for the second part uh, when we get into the textures. Mm -hmm. So thank you for watching, like and subscribe, you know all this stuff and see you the next time here around.